Hey. Hello, Mike. What's going on? What's up? I'm pregnant. I'm the father. We didn't mean for this to happen. It's not their fault, honey. I thought that she'd be sterile from the chemo. Right now, I'd give my life for a beer. <laughs> yeah. Susan? Susan, you can't possibly have this baby. Why not? You're acting as if everything is normal. Nothing is normal. You're 16 years old. You're an unwed mother. And you're very ill. I don't care, Daddy. Isn't it wonderful? I thought I couldn't get pregnant, but I did. It's a miracle. Have you told Dr. Dan? She's afraid to. Have you told your parents? He's afraid to, honey. So what do you think, Dad? I'm a social worker. I'm supposed to know what to say. I don't know what to say, Susan. This time you've really done it to me. Oh, my parents, now you tell yours. <laughs> I can't. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> what are you crazy? Your dad just wanted to kill me. So, once the dust settles, everything will be fine. <sighs> Smile. We're gonna have a baby. Congratulate me, Dr. Dan. It's a happy occasion. This makes things very complicated. You said life was simple, right? You don't understand. There are serious dangers to you and the baby. I could get run over by a car, too. Susan, this is a high-risk pregnancy. There could be a premature delivery with, with heart and respiratory problems. It could be born mentally retarded, physically handicapped. It could even be born addicted to the drugs you're on. It could. But who says it will? The odds are very good. What happens is well documented. We have to listen to him, Susan. I originally called you in here to discuss the results of the biopsy. I think we should talk about that. Okay, let's talk. The tumor's come back, Susan. It's moved to the bone. That's why you've been having all that pain. This pregnancy could not have happened at a worse time. But it did happen. It's a miracle, baby. Miracles can be severely disabled. And you have got to consider who is going to care for a child with birth defects. 
You mean because I'm not going to be around? You want to bring a new life into this world. Susan, I have got to be honest with you. Your, your chances of survival at this point are less than 25%. Now it comes down to this. If you have that baby, we're going to have to stop the chemotherapy because of the danger to the fetus. Meanwhile, your tumor is going to continue to grow. So I'll go that much sooner. You'd be willing to trade months of your life for this baby, if it survives, which, as I said, the odds are against. There is one other option. You could have an abortion. Now, that would be my choice. I know I cannot tell you what to do. But I'd like to schedule it for next week. You let me know what you decide. Meanwhile, I want you back in the hospital so we can start radiating that arm. Okay. Mother. <laughs> what to do, honey. You always tell me what to do. I know, but you never listen, so what's the point? What's with you lately? You didn't even get mad when I told you I was pregnant. Oh, I was mad. Believe me. You got mad and you didn't tell me? That's a first. No, I mean, I wasn't really mad. I... This is great. I get sick and nobody will talk to me. Oh, Susan, stop it. That's not true. Then tell me what to do. Honey, Susan, I met your father when I was 16. Yeah, I know. The same age as you. Now, we didn't get married for a few years, but I always knew it was going to be him. And in those days, when you got, you know, engaged and everything, uh, well, it changed your life, you know? You became a woman. The end. No, not the end, honey. The beginning. <sighs> so you're a woman now. And what you do with your body is your choice. I can't make that choice for you, Susan. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Do you? I'm sorry. I am. Um, I'm not very good at this. I wasn't really planning on having having this talk for a few years. <sighs> I didn't plan on it ever. Yeah, well, can I tell you? thing I'm gonna pray for a girl boys are a bug mom she's not gonna have the baby she decided today 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. All right. The first number, under B. Seven. Lucky number seven. She's got to have the baby. I asked Father Cleveland. Number G. Father Cleveland. He loves Susan. He says a mass for every day. Does he really? How touching. Do you know he hasn't come to see her once? Just like a lot of other people. He knows what's right. How can he possibly know what's right for Susan? How can Susan decide a thing like this? She's turned it over and over in her mind. She's talked to Brian and the doctors. She just feels it's too much of a risk. She doesn't have the physical strength. When is she going to have the abortion? Tomorrow at 8 o'clock. She's too young to decide a thing like this. <laughs> Ma, come on. She's older than both of us. I-27. Just hold on. Yeah, no, I I'm coming right now. Okay. Brian! Did Dad wake up? No. Great. What's wrong? I'll be right back. Brian! We already decided, Susan. We decided. I'm lying here wishing tomorrow won't come. If I'm wishing that hard, it can't be right. Look, if you stay pregnant, you'd have to stop chemotherapy. I know. You, you, the cancer will get worse. I know. Well, you can't stop chemotherapy, so you can't have the baby. The truth is, I live maybe six months longer with the chemotherapy than without it. So? Six months? It's six months. Maybe it's not worth it. What do you mean, not worth it? I mean, I could die before I have the baby or while I'm having it or after. Why don't I just go for it and have the kid? Well, what about us? I mean, six months is a long time, you know? I, I, you don't know for sure. With I've always been a runner, Brian. And so have you, and so is everybody I know. Except my baby sister, Christine. You can't run from this, Brian. Look, I'm not running away from anything. Then why haven't you even told your parents? What do my parents have to do with this? Shut up! Hey, you guys. What's the matter with you? <clears throat> I'm Dr. Torres, pediatric resident. Who else is going to be wandering through this ward at one o'clock in the morning? You must be Brian. Right. right. Hi. I know that having an infant with birth defects seems far away. It's hard to picture. Maybe if you see the real thing, it'll help you make up your mind. This is the neonatal intensive care unit. Very likely your baby would end up here. Come on, Mrs. Roberts, you're feeding. <clears throat> Many of our newborns are hooked up to machines which do the breathing for them. Why is this one so still? Well, sometimes we have to give a drug to paralyze them so that they don't fight the respirator. They're so small, like little dolls. But they're not dolls, Susan. They're sick children in distress. And some of them will die. And it's so hard on the parents to not be able to nurture your child, to see her. Dependent on a machine now and maybe the rest of her life. Thank God the machine is there. Brian? They drew blood, but I haven't gotten the lab results back yet. Brian? I want to have a baby. Think about it, Susan. Is this the kind of baby you want to bring into the world? My baby will be perfect, I know it. But even if he weren't perfect, I'd love him anyway. Come on, look at it. So tiny. 